today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. The crew at MCU works to make the dreams of 32-foot Seacraft owner Tyler Gorman become reality with a perfect paint job in their sights. The glass guys did so much custom fabrication, we've got to fare everything in, and we've got a time frame on this thing. We've got to meet. Tyler's expecting to have this boat done for the summer. FS Boating Editor Dave East heads out with Brian O'Donnell, owner of MCU, to discuss one of his most custom builds, a completely transformed classic Bertram. It's got the look and the fit and the feel of a much larger, much more expensive boat. And Brian is called to make an emergency fix on a custom sport fish. Looks like they were getting ready to launch it. Steve's doing a couple of things underneath. So we got here just in time. So let's go. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. All right, so I'm building a 32 Seacraft for a friend of mine, Tyler Gorman. He's asked me to do all kinds of neat custom features. I'm really excited about this build because I'm doing things I've never done before. We actually have a ladder coming out of the bow of the boat. He's got a really neat forward V seating area. He's got a window in his live well, not to mention a bow thruster and a dive door that you can go in and out from the side of the boat. I'm super stoked about wrapping this boat up. I've got to get it in the paint shop now that the glass guys are all done. Mike's got a lot of work cut out for him. The glass guys did so much custom fabrication, we've got to fare everything in, and we've got a time frame on this thing. We've got to meet. Tyler's expecting to have this boat done for the summer. We got the 32 Seacraft back from the fiberglass shop. They did a really good job on it, but this boat isn't your typical boat. This owner has us one end to another, customized little tweaks here and there, so we have got a ton of body work ahead of us. When we first get on the boat, if there's not really a lot of highs, I'll take a little six inch DA orbital and I'll buzz around with some 80 or 120 just to get everything, all the areas scratched up. We'll pull the, the first wipe and then we'll start getting in with 60, 40, really getting everything knocked down. And that's when you start really seeing where you're at and how much more you really have to go. We went ahead and used all fair on this job. Basically the same thing as we do with the polyester wipes. It's just more of an epoxy fairing. It's more of just kind of like smoothing everything out, getting everything to, to flow a lot nicer. Anytime you're doing body work in general, I mean, you, you got to make sure that you're working with material at the right mixtures. I mean, I, it goes with the paint, it goes with everything. When, when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's got to be meticulously done or it just won't kick. I mean, you pull it all fair wipe across the whole thing and you didn't mix it properly, you got days of scraping it off. You really got to be critical on what you're doing. As far as, as, as blocking and stuff, it's not always smart to stay in the smallest area possible. I mean, there's times you have to. But feather things out, get it smooth. I mean, the more time you spend with the body work and getting it right, the better quality you're gonna have. I mean, the paint job's only 10%. The rest of it is body work. 90% of it's all your prep work, your body work. I mean, your paint's just laying down on what you have done. So if you haven't done a good job, you're, no matter how smooth the paint job is, it's still gonna look like there's bad areas. After we get all the body work done, we're gonna start off with a high build primer. It's a little thicker of a primer, it's like more your base primer. You spray that down first, therefore you fix any little imperfections, little pinholes, that's kind of like your basic, your base area. Once you do that, we'll trace it back out. We'll sand it all down with some 150, 120. Find any of the little imperfections and do little Bondo body work. The 545 is your sealer. That, that's your last coat before you go to paint. It needs to be one solid coat over the whole boat. If you're sitting there doing body work on it, you're breaking through the high build, breaking through body work down a glass. When you go to spray paint on, it's gonna react differently to it and you're gonna see a, a funny area. So it's very critical that we do all the body work, prep, high build, and then put your 545 on 
and that's your sealer coat. You're not doing body work. You're simply just sanding it down and getting ready for paint. When we return, FS Boating Editor Dave East heads out with Brian O'Donnell, owner of MCU, to discuss one of his most custom builds. This segment brought to you by Marine Customs Unlimited. You dream it, we build it. We do it all. Custom fiberglass repair. Upholstery and canvas work. Custom dash panels. Specializing in insurance claims. Suzuki and Yamaha sales and service. We do it all. One stop boat shop. Home of fantastic plastics and the fiberglass shop. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us during this one man's dreamboat ride along, where we feature boats and their owners whose dreams have already become reality. FS Boating Editor Dave East meets with Brian O'Donnell, owner of MCU, to discuss one of his most custom builds, a completely transformed classic Bertram. Brian, thanks for inviting me out on this Bertram today. I know the original boat started off at 31 feet. What's your overall length now? Now, Dave, we've added approximately three and a half feet with this custom hull extension, mm -hmm. so you're just under 35 feet. Well, what was the inspiration? When you dealt with the owners on this boat, what was their inspiration to say, this is the modifications you want to make, and what's the mission this boat is designed for now? The biggest thing with this boat and this project was they were looking for something no one else had. Mm -hmm. And they wanted a boat that just wasn't run of the mill, wasn't something that anyone else could go out to the boat show and purchase and buy. And they loved the classic lines and look of the Bertram, and they knew the boat could be a performer. This actually was an old race boat that Richard Bertram used to race. Let's look a little bit more into the, to the uh, details of what you did to the boat. I know she used to be inboard power. Right. Now you've gone to outboard power yep. and you've extended it. Let's start here at the transom and work our way forward. Tell me why you went with the bracket and why they went with outboards over keeping the original inboard engines. Well, like I said, this wasn't a typical standard original 31 Bertram. This was an old race boat, so it had twin IOs all the way in the back transom of the boat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, to fish and to use a boat like that, it's kind of hard with a big engine box right. back here. So they went with the idea of going with the outboards, and we lengthened the whole entire boat. I ran stringers all the way from the bow. They run all the way out the stern over three and a half feet. So your actual running surface on the bottom of this boat really is approximately 35 feet. Okay, so you've got the effect of a bracket back here, but you kept your running surface, which is good. It's going to give you more displacement. It's to let you carry the weight of the motors and the extra weight of the cockpit. So that's a good idea for that design. Well, too, you now you have a shallower draft. You can trim these engines up at something that it, even an I.O. you're not going to be able to do. So I guess it would give the boat more utility. Well, the craftsman at your shop did a great job with this teak cockpit, but I know there's more than just what's on the surface. Tell me what's below here. These guys went ahead, they wanted large fish boxes. Inside the fish boxes, when you open them up, they've got huge area for storage. The attention to detail, when you lift that hatch up and you see the blue and black carbon fiber inlay on the bottom of the hatch, underneath the gunnels of the boat, the finish underneath the gunnels is as nice as the outside hull of the boat. Then we went into doing the modifications like the audio system, and we did a custom laser engraved speaker bezel grate that covers over the speaker. Now you don't even realize it's a speaker. You just see this custom polished stainless steel trim bezel and it looks really sharp. Well, the thing that caught my attention when I looked inside the bilge, the bilge in this boat has the same finish as the outside of the boat. It is absolutely gorgeous. Plus it would be super easy to clean. Yeah, not only is it clean down in the bilge, it's also in the generator room. So you're able to go down and access your generator or work on it. And you could spill a little oil on an oil change. You could wipe up in the bottom of that all grip paint job like there's no big issue at all. Well, as nice as this area is back here at the transom, that helm area is absolutely gorgeous. Come tell me more about that. Let's take a look. This helm area is beautiful. It's simple. I love the dual controls, but the electronics. Where are your electronics? Actually, Dave, the electronics are right there. Watch this. Wow, that is very cool. Last time I saw something like this, it was on a million plus dollar yacht. I wasn't expecting to see that on a boat this size. No, and that's what, like I said, that's one of the really cool things about having an unlimited budget. You're able to do the cool things that you're just not gonna see. You're not gonna see these Palm Beach lever controls on a teak pod helm console with electric steering. This has Helm Master with Yamaha, where you could play with a joystick and run all three engines, twist them in and out, run the boat sideways, hover the boat in an area. It's pretty neat stuff. We, we wanted the idea to implement the sport fishing feel of the boat. And that was the whole idea of this helm pod area with the side seating. You actually feel like you're in a sport fish fly bridge 
and you're hanging out. And when you look down into this cockpit, you get that feel as well. And with the long trips, Dave, the other thing you really need is for creature comfort things is like a cabin to get out of the weather. Down inside, believe it or not, for the small area that I had to work with, we made a lot of room and we made a lot of neat features. Let me show you. Well, the cabin area, it is a little tight, but when I look in there, you've got all the amenities that you would need for an overnight trip. Yeah, Dave, I mean, you got to remember, we're putting a lot of things and implementing a lot of stuff into a pretty small boat. You're only right. 35 feet here. But you actually have over six, six and a half foot of headroom. You've got a full V-berth that you can lay out on being a six foot person. And then you also have all the amenities that you would think you would need in any typical big boat. You've got two freezers inside of here that are run off the generator. They have chiller plates in them. One's a fridge, one's a full freezer. And then you have the microwave, you have a coffee pot, you have a sink, and you've got a really neat head that's hidden and concealed away that no one looks at when they're down in the cabin until you come over and you hit the actuator. All right, well, you've told me about all the stuff that you can see. Let's get into the systems on the boat. Tell me about some of the stuff that you can't see that I know is in this boat. So when we did the plumbing in this boat, we actually did it all in PVC pipe, and we glassed fittings on where we can connect hoses right before we're gonna hook up to a pump. And all of our electricals down in the control panel down inside the cabin, and it's put away, out of sight, out of mind. Well, under this hatch in the floor, you've got your battery bank down there and all your battery switches. I like the fact that you've kept it up here. It's out of the transom. It's out of that, you know, a salty bilge, but it's easily accessible. You've stuffed a lot of stuff, like you said, into a boat that's, what, 35 feet long? This boat can fish, it can cruise, it can travel in comfort, but it's got the look and the fit and the feel of a much larger, much more expensive boat. It's total quality. The boat's obviously going to last a long, long time. You did a great job. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you, very you much, inviting Dave. me out, Brian. Appreciate it. With an initial purchase cost of $20,000, after adding $550,000 in custom modifications at MCU, the cost of this dream boat comes to a total of $570,000. When we come back, the crew at MCU prepares the 32-foot Seacraft project for a custom paint job. This segment brought to you by Armstrong, celebrating 25 years of creativity and innovation. Do you have the Armstrong advantage? In its most basic form, an Armstrong outboard bracket improves the efficiency of your outboard motor. This equates to a faster time to plane and higher top speeds. The list of advantages continue with improved maneuverability, added space, and a quieter ride. Adding a swim platform accompanied by an Armstrong boarding ladder will certainly add to your day out on the water. Isn't it time for you to gain the Armstrong advantage? Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the crew at MCU prepares the 32-foot Seacraft project for a custom paint job. So now that we've got our 32 Seacraft all primed and ready for paint, Tyler's looking for a little more of that Richie Rich, Palm Beach, fancy style look. So he's picked a really neat color. It's called Blue Tone White. All Grip has formulated this color to where it looks almost like a white from a distance, but when it's put up to a white, you can actually tell it's like a pale blue. I've got my friends at Fiberglass Florida. They're gonna help us mix this custom color. I'm excited to see what this thing's gonna look like. To begin the process of mixing a custom paint color, a specialist locates and prints out the required formula sheet. This sheet will tell them exactly how much of each pigment is necessary to make the desired color. Before the paint is pulled from the shelf, all of the cans are mixed thoroughly. A blank label is pulled for the new can, and the sticker of the desired color is applied. Here, blue tone white. The new can is placed on top of a scale and it's zeroed. Before opening any cans, the specialist makes sure to wear a respirator and safety goggles. The base color the formula sheet calls for is white, which is poured into the can until the weight reaches the appropriate amount. Then, the specialist gently swirls around the base color, so any darker colors added do not cling to the sides of the can, which could cause issues when the painter goes to spray. The specialist then adds the remaining colors, black, blue, and yellow, making sure to reset the scale every time he adds a new color, ensuring a perfect formula match. With all the necessary colors added, the can is sealed tight and placed inside of a high-speed paint mixer for about four minutes. Once complete, the paint can is removed and the new label is rolled onto it. It is now ready to be delivered to MCU. 
So today's the day, we're gonna spray the outside of this boat, but it is pouring. A little bit of rain's not bad, but when you start getting that heavy rain, you get a lot of the moisture in the air. It's, it really can mess up the paint job. We got lucky though, towards the end of the day, it really laid down. We waited till everybody left, got this thing in there at nighttime to where it actually turned out to be perfect shooting conditions. You know, there's no dust in the air. We get it in the booth, we gotta make sure this thing is wiped down, cleaned off. There's been people walking by it, you know, grinding going on, motors being fired up. All that stuff plays in to having issues. You gotta make sure this thing is wiped down, especially for having a primo paint job like this boat's gonna have. So we get it all wiped down, tacked off. I mean, we went ahead, let everything sit for a little bit. I went back over and just kinda checked the hall one last time, really make sure we were, we were where it needed to be. Just got the paint from fiberglass of Florida, so now we're ready. It, it's very, like I said before, it's very critical to make sure we have everything done right. With all Craft 2000, which we're using, it's a two to one, it's 25%. You gotta make sure that you're doing that mixture properly or it just won't kick. So we have the All Cat 2, which is your activator. It's what actually gets the paint to flash off. We wound up going with T003, the standard reducer. The reducer just helps thin it out so when you're spraying, it, it lays it down nice and smooth. Went ahead and mixed those two in. We spun those up pretty good, made sure they're mixed together. With Allcraft 2000, it's two to one. So you've got one gallon of paint, you've got a half gallon of Allcat number two. So now you're really working with a gallon and a half of material, plus the reducer. Now we got the paint mixed together. We've got to let it sit and induct for 15 minutes. While that's happening, I'd like to take my gun and, and make sure that I've got everything there, everything's clean, the tip. You know, you gotta make sure all that stuff's really up to par. Once again, you're just not gonna get that quality of the paint job. Once it's activated, we'll go ahead and pour the paint in the gun, and we'll still, even at that stage, we'll check everything. We'll plug it all in, we'll get the pattern right, we'll get the amount of, that we want, the airflow that we want, get everything perfect. Because once you go to the boat, there, there's no really stepping back and going, oh, I mean, you, you really want to get that point and just go. We actually got kind of lucky with the weather. Right before we're getting ready to spray, probably about 20 minutes, a half hour, it stopped raining. So now we're just a nice wet area, no dust is out. I started spraying on the boat. It, really laid down really nice. Really there's the only really technique you have is just not to stop. When you come out to the end you gotta let it flow. But every painter is different. Some are fast, some are slow, some like to put out more pressure. I mean it's really you gotta zone into the way you are comfortable with spraying. But the big thing is, is is when you are spraying, regardless of how or even with a puff can, I mean you can't just stop and then keep going because you're gonna get a heavy spot there and you are going to get runs. You know, it, with the same thing with the runs, going back to the pot, making sure everything's adjusted properly. End result, it came out really nice. I mean, I, I think Tyler's really gonna be happy with it. When we return, the crew at MCU makes an emergency enclosure repair on a custom sport fish. This segment brought to you by My FWC. Life jackets save lives. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the team at MCU makes an emergency enclosure repair on a custom sport fish. Today I had to send Vic down to go fix an enclosure. The last person who built it, they did a really good job, but the thing was a little bit loose and the customer was complaining about it not fitting and not being right. I'm gonna have Vic go tighten up the zippers. He's gotta do some sewing and stitching. Vic's been doing this a long time. I know he's not gonna have any issues. All right, we just got a call from a and Boatworks. Um, Steve out there, he's got an emergency job. Boat's there for a little a couple of days, and um, the curtains are too loose. So we're gonna go down there and see what we can do to fix them up, 
and uh, make everybody happy. What we're gonna do is uh, mark this bottom zipper and we're just gonna take the rope out of the track and take it back to the shop. We'll lower it, restitch it for him, and bring it back. We'll pull the zipper down, try to find out where it's gonna land so we know how far to move it. So that's about where the zipper lands. So that's we're gonna mark it. Now we can take the track back off the boat and take it back to the shop, put it on the bench, and get her fixed. We've got three eighths. We're gonna go ahead and give him, uh, lower it down a good half inch. Zippers seem to tend to, to stretch a little, so uh, we're gonna tighten it up pretty good for him. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the zipper off, move it down, and just re-sew it on. Pretty easy to do, you just gotta make sure you put your zippers back where they go. Uh, make sure you're even, you got an even pull. So we tighten it up a little more than we're supposed to, so even if we have a little bit of slack in it, we're, we're still good. Tighten it up for him. Zipper's out of the way, so he'll have easy access to roll that zipper back and forth. And we'll go down to the boat and, and try it and make sure it works real good for him. So we're back at the boat. Looks like they were getting ready to launch it. Steve's doing a couple of things underneath. Throw some new zincs on there. Um, so we got here just in time. So let's go. All right, we're gonna Put the rope back in the track and uh, go ahead and zip the curtains on and we should be good to go. All right, we're looking, we're looking real good. As you can see, curtains have tightened up a lot. Um, they're probably still going to stretch a little. I'm sure the customer will be happy with this. It's right where it's supposed to be. We're just going to pull it back, put the screws back in it so nothing moves and shifts. Uh, adjust it, and uh, we're, we're done. Next time on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. The experts at MCU continue to work on Tyler's fully custom 32-foot Seacraft. And... FS Boating Editor Dave East heads out with Frank Hayden to discuss his decked out 32-foot Intrepid, designed for cruising and fishing in style.